I am a 54-year-old that works as a transportation manager for a large company in Virginia. My income is such that my family lived comfortably. My wife April, also 54, was an executive assistant in another large Virginia-based company. April and I were married for almost 21 years. At the 1st of April was a fantastic wife. I worked long hours because my job demanded it. When I got home, my dinner was always on the table. The house was always clean. April was always good at paying the bills and keeping everything going with the family money. Honestly, for almost 20 years, I thought we were happy. We had three beautiful daughters during those 20 years. I know they were mine just by looking at them. My mother is a beautiful lady and all three of my daughters remind me of her. In fact, when they were with my parents, people would comment, you can tell those gals or your grandkids one day while at work, I was walking to the shipping office to meet with some people. I slipped and fell almost four feet on some stairs. Thankfully, I did not break any bones but I was stoved up for almost a month. I still worked but it was difficult. One of the bosses of the company vice president came by my office and said to go home, take some time off so you can heal some. Since this man used to have my job, I knew he could cover for me. The next day I noticed April had forgotten to put our insurance renewal cards in our cars. No big deal, but the ones in the cars had already expired. I called her at work and we talked, I asked her about lunch but she said she had some business meetings and they would have lunch. Brought in mind you, I did not call her company business line. I called her cell phone at that time. I had no reason to doubt her. So I knew the card in her car had expired. I drove over to her company and started looking for her car. There were about 500 vehicles in that parking lot and I looked at every one of them. April's car was not in that parking lot. I'm still thinking nothing's wrong but was really concerned that she get this new card. So I called her cell and she answered when April answered, she seemed frustrated. I was calling her. I said I was sorry and was planning to ask about her car when she said something odd. I'm at work hun. I know you are still not feeling well, but you have to leave me alone so I can do my job. That statement, I'm at work, hit me like a 2 by 4 across my head. I was sitting in the parking lot of a Wawa convenience store and remembered looking across the way to where her company was knowing she was telling me one thing and I knew she was telling a lie. I guess I sat in that parking lot for almost 30 minutes going over that call. At this time, I had a daughter attending the University of Virginia and two still in high school. I called my daughter in Charlottesville and we spoke for a few minutes. I just needed to hear her voice. So I just went home. I left April's insurance card on the table. April came home that afternoon and looked at me with an angry expression. I let it all go, but something inside me knew something was wrong. That next day I drove to another town and met with a private investigator. I knew he asked me for a photo of April, her car and her car tag her general work hours. He even asked me where her favorite places to eat were. He told me what his fees were and we settled. He told me to just go back to work and let him do his job. It was almost a month later. By this time I was back at work, the private investigator called me and I asked him to come to my job. We spoke in my office. He told me that April was seeing a man that was a department head in another department. He was not April's boss. The man was almost 60. The private investigator even had some photos of this man kissing his wife. He did have photos of him and April going into several hotels during the day, I had everything I needed. Then the first thing I did was call my daughter that was at college. I did not get deep into the situation but wanted her to know that I wanted her to come home. That next weekend, I then hired an attorney that the private investigator highly recommended. This guy was very good. 
Within 72 hours after meeting with the private investigator, I had hired an attorney and he had filed for divorce on the grounds of adultery. This was all finished by that Friday afternoon. I told my other two daughters in front of their mother to not make any plans for that day. As we had an important family meeting, I then told April we needed to talk when I think about it. Now, I think she knew it was over. I remember the look of pure panic in her eyes. April and I went for a drive. April asked me what was going on. That's when I handed her the divorce papers. I also warned her to stay quiet because I knew who he was. April started to sob a bit. She said, okay, I understand. But can we please see the pastor of our church before we do anything? I said no and started driving home. April then started begging me not to say anything to the company about the affair. Her AP will get into trouble on the way home. April told me what was happening one day a week. Her AP would borrow her for a project and they would go check into a hotel. April asked me to not tell our daughters. I said that is not possible because you are moving out tonight. After the family meeting, I then told April if she doesn't move out, I will show the photos to our daughters. Understand that was a bluff. I would never do that to them. April bought it. What we told the girls was we could not live together anymore and that their mom was moving out that night. Then later, somehow my oldest daughter found my copy of the divorced paperwork. She walked into my bedroom that night and sat on my bed crying. I told her I never wanted her to see that paperwork. I don't want her to hate her mother. My daughter asked me if there was any chance we could reconcile. I said no, that next day was a Sunday. And by then all three girls were up and at the table in tears, I told the girls both of us love them. They would always have a home there. I then spent some time writing some notes for questions to ask my attorney. The next time we met, I also had a chance opportunity to speak to the CEO of the company where April worked. By this time, I had several of the private investigators' photos stored on my phone. I showed that man those photos, I knew those photos hit a nerve. He asked me to bring all my information and meet him at a small diner later that day. And I did, I learned this man had already been warned about doing this at his job. I then asked him to please not terminate my wife. He said that will be up to her department head, but he will see what he could do. I left that diner and went back to work. My daughter spent the next several weeks ripping into their mother. It got so bad. My wife called me crying asking me to get involved and stop it. I told her they must get that venom out. I also had each one of them speak to the pastor at our church. I give that man a lot of credit. Over time, the girls start ripping into April, but they did pull away from her to this day. Almost eight years later, they are not close. I was able to keep the house. I did have to settle with April for her part of the equity in the house. April got no spousal support and the two youngest daughters live with me. April got half of the money in the bank but was not allowed to touch my retirement. Her AP was forced to retire by the CEO. His wife later divorced him. When my oldest daughter got married, I walked her down the aisle. I sat about five feet away from April at the reception. April was attempting to talk to me until finally my middle daughter who was in college by then got up in her mom's face and told her to leave me alone. April stopped attempting to talk after that. When my first grandbaby was born, April was not there. My youngest daughter called her. April told her she was not coming. I walked out into a small vending area at the hospital and got some coffee. When later my son-in-law came out, he was not asking questions, just wanted to know if I was okay. I said it was frustrating because a part of me still loved April. He asked if there was any chance of us getting back together. I said no. The next day just before my daughter was discharged, April came to see her grandbaby. My daughter was already in her regular clothes. 
My daughter and son-in-law both made it clear to her that this was her grandchild. She was welcome into their lives, but must understand to leave me alone. All three of my daughters have made it clear to their mom. If she forces them to make a choice, they would choose me. About a year ago, I met Angie. We spend a lot of time together and we both have a lot of common things we like. We will never marry. I will be retiring in about five years. I am planning to move back to West Virginia where my parents were born and my mother still lives. Of course, I plan to spoil my grandchildren. April is living on disability these days. She had an accident at work and disabled for life. My daughter told me she is in a lot of pain. When I think about April, I am reminded of this quote. Not only is there often a right and wrong, but what goes around does come around.